Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire, and this week I wanted to talk to you about, um, I wanted to address a question that I receive quite frequently um, from people who email me or comment on my Facebook. Uh, that is with regards to stencils versus masks. So for the last couple of Facebook Lives that I did, I've been working with my stencil and mask designs for joggles.com and I've gotten questions about the difference and I wanted to sort of um, explain and share that with you in the studio uh, today. So I'm coming to you right now from my in the house studio where I do my collaging and my painting and when I do paper uh, gel printing, I work outside in my garage space where I have a six foot table and my my overhead camera and my gel plate and all my paints and brayers and a deep sink which is super helpful so um, if you haven't seen my Facebook live streams they are on replay and you can um, find them on my Facebook page um, that is paper paintings collage artwork and I'm going to continue to do some live streams there if you're interested um, also if you want to follow me on Instagram um, I am paper paintings collage and um, I have got uh, Fabulous Florals. My, um, uh, my most popular uh, online workshop has just begun uh, this week. So if you're looking for something to do while you're home, um, this is a five week online course. The videos are all pre-recorded, so you watch them at your own pace. And we have a virtual classroom. So one uh, lesson publishes each week for five weeks and we've just only started this week with the classroom lecture. Um, and in our virtual classroom, everybody uploads and comments and I critique uh, all uploads. So if you're interested in that, check it out on my website, paperpaintings.com slash workshops. So if you've got a few minutes and I have a feeling that you do, let's go out to the garage studio and learn about the difference between stencils and masks. Welcome back. So today i am using my golden fluid acrylics and i have got set out teal and green gold and i have already made some solid base sheets using these two colors and then i'm going to do my stencil layers with slightly darker versions of those colors and i've got manganese blue and thalo green yellow shade so i always work from light to dark so i've got some light sheets already prepared in teal and in the green gold and i am going to show you the difference between stencils and masks by going over those with the manganese and the thalo green as you know i have several uh designs of stencils and masks with joggles.com and um they are available on their website and they are um, all nine by twelve designs and they are all under six dollars which is a great amazing deal so i wanted to read to you um from joggles what they say is uh the difference between a stencil and a mask and they say stencils are thin sheets of plastic mylar or similar material with areas cut away to form a shape or a design. So this, for example, is a stencil because it is that thin sheet of mylar and the areas that are cut away form the design. So the holes, the negative spaces in this form the design. The next one, this one as well, the design, this is a stencil and the design of the, the uh, rectangles is formed by holes cut out of the mylar sheet. Now the next one is a mask. In the mask, the mylar is cut in a free form so it's not in a square and the design is the positive is the mylar the design is created with the mylar not, not so much the holes uh but the but it's a positive image so the design is is the mylar um that is the difference you can see the difference this one is a square mylar sheet where the design is the holes and this one is where the mylar is the design so this one as well is a mask. So the freeform design is created by the mylar. So we today are going to talk about the difference between the stencils and the masks and show and show you the difference. Um, and where I think it, it always gets interesting is the secondary print or the ghost print. So I've got my gel press gel plate here and I am going to start with the teal sheets and I'm going to start with the masks 
So I'm gonna use my manganese blue, roll that out in a nice thin layer. I haven't got enough paint, I can already tell. A little bit more. Roll the paint out in a nice thin layer over the surface of the gel plate. Then I'm gonna take my mask and lay that into the paint and take my pre-printed teal sheet and put it on top and press through with my fingertips or the heel of the palm of my hand to make sure that the pattern is achieved by pushing the paper down through the mask. So I always pull up a corner and peek and see if there's another space where I need to apply more pressure to pick up more paint. So here is the design created by the mask. So we're seeing the design from the teal blue that was underneath and it is the shape of the mask. So now we've got what they call a ghost print on here. So we will lift up the mask and quickly grab another ready to go teal sheet and press and pick up that paint that was trapped under the mylar that's still wet and we are gonna get a second print or a ghost print from the mask. So isn't that nice? So that's a whole different print really than the first one. The first one is where the, um, the, the print is pretty crisp and sharp and the second one, it is sort of softer and more painterly. So there's applications for both, um, but you can see that in the mask, again, the pattern is created by the positive mylar. Um, and here are the two different prints of that. So what I could do to build upon this to make it a more interesting print is to take another stencil or a mask and then yet another shade darker of blue and do another layer and then another layer because the key is multiple layers to get really gorgeous collage paper. So, but we're gonna set that aside and we're gonna look at our second mask, which is the roses and see how that works on the green. So we're going to use a little bit of the phthalo green yellow shade. Roll that out in a nice thin layer. Then we're gonna put the mask into the paint. Take the prepared green gold sheet and put it over. So this is the same as the last one. It is also a mask, but I just wanna show you a different pattern with a different color combo. So again, I'm pressing with the heel of my hand, I'm rubbing with my fingers to make sure that everything is making good contact. I'm gonna lift up a corner and see if I need to apply pressure anywhere else. And there you have the pattern created by the positive mask image cut from the Mylar. I love this stencil. I love this mask. Um, so now I've got, again, paint trapped down in the, in the uh, underneath the mylar. So I'm going to do a ghost print. I'm going to lift that up quickly, take my prepared sheet and grab that ghost print, that secondary print from the mask. Now here I get that secondary ghost print. So now I've got two prints from the mask. And again, we could layer another print with this mask over that mask and another layer of color to get more layers of visual interest in our collage papers. So that's masks. Now let's demonstrate stencils. So I've got these two stencils. I'm going to again start with my, well, let's stay with the green since there's still green on my brayer. So we're going to go with green. We're going to take this stencil and lay it into the paint. Take the prepared sheet and put it on top and use the heel of our hand and our fingers to press the paper down through the openings in the stencil. Now here we get the pattern created by the holes that are cut in the mylar, the rectangular pattern. And again, I've got some paint trapped under there, so I'm going to lift that up to do a ghost print and I'm gonna put it this time on the, bl the blue teal. So I'm gonna transfer that green onto my teal and now I get the stencil, which is the ghost print, which is creating the paint that was trapped under the stencil. And I'm getting that same rectangular pattern 
as I did from the first print. So that is the first stencil design. That's, um, this one looks really great layered with swirly designs. So when you, when you start layering, I love, I created this rectangle stencil so that when you start layering and you put a swirly design with, combined with sort of a straight edge design, kind of starts to great, create great color combos. So let's do that on this one. Let's, let's do that on this one. And I'll show you this stencil. So let's go a little darker blue so that it shows up on here. So I'm going to grab a phthalo blue green shade. That's actually a lot darker blue, but mm, I'll use it anyway. Okay. It's going to be a jump from medium to dark pretty fast. So actually what I'll do is I'll mix some of my manganese in with it to lighten it up a bit. Now, my brayer is dirty, and the best way to clean a brayer is to roll it off onto a clean sheet of paper. So I'm going to do that off to the side until I don't have any more green transferring. And now I'm going to blend up my blues. Then I take my stencil, my rose pattern stencil, put it into the paint, and I'm going to take my prepared sheet that's already got a layer on it. Now I've got a great stencil swirly rose pattern on top of the straight line pattern, which is on top of the light green solid sheet. So here I'm starting to build some really nice layers with a combination of two different stencils. I'm going to remove the stencil, which reveals my leftover paint that was trapped underneath, and I'm going to put it on top of my previous stencil layer. And there I've got a beautiful combination of the ghost print of my rose stencil laid over the rectangles, which is over the solid sheet of teal. So here again are the two different prints that you're getting, the more hard edged original stencil uh, print and then the softer secondary ghost print and some lovely green blue color combinations for spring. So happy Friday and thank you for being here.